Okay, and just like that, we got eight whiskeys left. I got 17, 18, 19, and 20 for you today. And actually, all four of these are from a different part of the world. Let's see what they are. Okay, number 17, we got another Irish for the calendar. This is called, that's from Walsh Whiskey, and it's called the Writer's Tears Copper Pot. This is a no age statement blended Irish whiskey. This is a blend of malt and pot still whiskeys. It is 80 proof, 40% alcohol, and it is $44. So not bad in the price range. Um, I, like I've said before, other than that 65% um, Irish we've had, what, two videos ago, I don't really like Irish whiskeys. They are very hit or miss, usually miss with me because it's really muted. Uh, let's figure out if this nose is muted or not. You know what? That nose is much more fruit pops than I'm normally getting with the Irish, so. I might call that a very, like, fruity jam. Yeah, kind of like grape jelly. Right on top there, that's nice. Maybe a smidge of some nutty honey as well. Okay, so this might be one of my uh, favorite Irish then, if this is going to per uh, persist into the palate. Let's find out. Definitely more oak spice. Wow, I was not prepared for that with the with the nose. That's not a bad thing. That's good. Really, kind of maybe even like peppery spice, but a lot of oak uh, as well. Really smooth, obviously, because it's forty percent. But wow, that's that's a much more palate than I'm used to getting on these forty percent Irishes. So this is good for me. Um, again, this is Walsh Whiskey, Writer's Tears. Yeah, like a spicy, peppery, oak fruit basket. That's what I'll call that. Really solid. Probably the favorite Irish I've had um, ever, and definitely on the, on the calendar. So that was number 17. 18 brings us to Denver, Colorado. This is from Law's Whiskey House. This is their San Luis, or Luis, Valley Straight Rye. This is actually age seven years, so not a no age statement, finally. It is 95 proof, 47.5% alcohol. This is $61. What's funny is before I started talking, I was stiff this a little bit. You know, Flaviar says, you know, vanilla, mint, cinnamon, citrus. I gotta tell you. I'm not getting any of that on here other than probably this the rye spice. But to me, this kind of smells like a fruit mash that's also like buried in some dirt with some corn growing on top of that. You know, this kind of imagery there. You got fruit mash on the bottom, cover it in dirt, and then corn grows out of it. That's what I'm getting. It's very, very earthy with a little bit of the rye spice. May you know what? Hold on. There's a smidge of uh, vanilla, mint pop. Kind of refreshes your nose but as far as like their little thing goes i didn't get that which just goes to show you your nose is your nose so just follow it like toucan sam says see we taste yeah now very spicy obviously it's a straight rye Ooh, but in, but again that is super corn oak it's I'm not getting the like really really sweetness that it's trying to tell me on the on the flavor spiral that it gives you. This is saying there's supposed to be some cocoa. If it it's it's very very subtle. If it's there, and it's probably gonna be more of a finish thing. I will say as the, as the second Colorado whiskey I've had, I think that was number ten was my first. That one's better than this one. Um, this one's not bad. Um, but reading the nose and palate notes, I really, really wanted to have some of these sweet cocoa stuff going on. Not getting it. To me, it kind of just tastes like a corn whiskey with some rye spices. It's basically what I'm getting out of this. It's nothing fantastic, but the finish, it sits, it's coming down really warm, nice and slow. And the finish mellows out into some sweeter notes, but those are also very subtle. It's kind of like... A very subtle cake very subtle cake right on the middle tongue that's about it so that was Law's Whiskey House San Luis Valley straight rye 
And then 19 brings us all the way over to Japan. Now I'm gonna use my paper for this because I'm going to butcher some words, but I'm gonna try not to. So this is from Matsui Shuzo Distillery. This is their Kujira, which is a, this is what I'm gonna butcher really, really bad, so I apologize ahead of time. This is the Ryukyu whiskey. So basically what I talked about in the last uh, Japanese whiskey was uh, Shuzo, or Shucho, I think is what it was, is a rice-based distillate spirit. So this ha this whiskey is a rice base, and then they blend other Japanese whiskeys into it. So this comes out at 92 proof, 46% alcohol, and this is $68. Um, so it's very popular in Okinawa. I'm curious, this is gonna be my very first experience with a rice based whiskey, so you know, it's gonna be interesting. So sniff it. Ooh. Have you ever smelt the inside of a cigar box? That very nice cedar smell? Imagine putting some apples and pears into the cedar box and closing that up. Very cedar influenced with those nice apple and pear notes. And I'm gonna say pretty prevalent ethanol, nothing too scary. With actually a little bit of cinnamon. I'm just gonna say I think that rice base doesn't help this a lot because that's usually only 30 to 40 percent alcohol tops. Yeah, that's it's definitely a little more. I think it's gonna sound weird to say like a like a sour flower. Okay, let's give it a sip. You get whoa, cauliflower. Super weird to say, but that was the, my immediate reaction was like, that's a vegetable. Very vegetable-y. Now, it's probably just obviously the rice base, but I'm going to say cauliflower with some pepper. Um, I need to taste like a meal. <laughs> that's really weird, but uh, I don't hate that. I, I like having these like really weird flavor combos come in on these new whiskeys that I'm trying, which is the best part about the, an advent calendar because you're not getting an entire bottle. Yeah, so definitely like, we're gonna call it just riced cauliflower, some pepper. A little bit of citrus, not a lot. That, ooh, I will say the finish on this, it's kind of like you're just eating like a dry salad, but that not in a bad way. Like, you can get a lot of flavors after you swallow for a little bit, and that's a nice finish. You know what? Not my uh, least favorite Japanese, not my favorite. This is surprisingly pretty good. The more I talk, the more that finish comes in on the on the tongue. It like goes from the back to the front of the tongue. That's a cool experience. Let me do a third sip. Yeah, if you have a shot, so this is the uh, Kujira um, from Matsui Shuzo Distillery. Cool experience. If you can find a small bottle or get like a sampler. I would give it a try. It's a super, super, very unique flavor palette that you're gonna get. And if anything, it's, it's fun to try. So that was number 19. And then number 20 takes us way down under. I've actually already done this whiskey before, so it's gonna be pretty quick. This is Starward Nova. I have the bottle handy. So, got the Australian whiskey. I'm gonna put the review that I've had on my channel up here. I really like this whiskey. I think I got like a 15 out of 20. This is a single model Australian. It is no wage statement. Let me go back to my notes really quickly. I think it was, they have it around $50. I think I got mine for like 55, but it's 82 proof, 41%. This is like, it's very orchardy on the, on the palate. I'm sorry, on the nose. This is a good whiskey. Seriously, like if you're trying to get into like Australian in general, like start with Starward Nova. It is super, super good. Um, if you're trying to get into whiskey in general, though, this won't scare you away. It's very smooth. It's very good. It's very fruity. It's like Fruit Loops, like I said in that review. And I really do like it, but not much to say about it because I already reviewed it, so you can go up there and watch that. Um, I'm going to give it a sip, though. Yeah, super good. And you actually get some, some oak with, actually, a little more pepper than I had in the review, I think, on that. So that's a nice little surprise there. But I actually drank this on Friday, so I, I really do enjoy this whiskey. It's really good. So I think if like 
of the four I have here, I recommend this the, this one the most. And in fact, like get into whiskey in general if you're still like new and trying to get into it. Like this is a great bottle to start with. It's like 50 bucks. It's really smooth. It doesn't have a, a flavor profile that'll like scare you away. It's very fruity. It's very enjoyable. So um, of all the ones so far in the calendar, 20 would be the one I recommend the most for anybody trying to get into whiskey. Um, so yeah, there you go for that. All right, that was days 17 to 20. I'm gonna have days 21 to 24 out probably Saturday, and I know it's Christmas Eve, so whatever, this is what we're gonna do, because that's the 24th. If you like this video, hey, give it a like. If you wanna see more whiskey content, you can always subscribe, that's how you get more. A um, reminder, I do game live on Saturdays at 7.30, and you can, I feature these whiskeys in the calendar. I have my own collection that I drink. I'm playing Sekiro right now. If you're a nerd and like Sekiro and like watching me, idiot, get my butt kicked and drink whiskey the whole time, then come in, we have a fun time, I think. But, uh, I'll see you next time. Schnott bad. Schnott bad. L-U-I-S. Is that Luis or Lewis? You know what would suck? It wasn't actually recording on the front.